Hi guys, uh, my name is Sophia. Welcome to uh, Introduction to Deep Learning. In this recitation, we're going to share about a powerful tool that we're going to use for a large part of this class homework, which is Google Colab. So in this video, we're going to talk about the basics of Colab. What is it? How to use it? What are the commands that we're going to run into the most in while interacting with this platform? Bash and magic commands, session, runtime, those terminologies, how to manage your file, which means the data sets, the model itself and the parameters, and how to use it along the way uh, while you're training your model and how to connect with Google Drive to not lose track and lose access, saving um, and loading your checkpoints, managing the data set, and we're going to talk about the paid versions of those. Uh, of this platform, which might be helpful to uh, some students in the class. So um, let's start with the basics. Colab is developed by Google, um, and it is a Jupyter Notebook style Python execution environment that is accessible directly through a web browser. The main benefit and the major part that we're going to use for this, the reason that we use for this platform is its computing resources. For the free version, um, we get access to CPUs and test the T4 GPU to access more powerful GPUs, which are faster and provides more compute units um, like V100 and A100 and L4. Um, we can choose to pay for Colab Pro or Pro Plus. So accessing Colab is just going to this link to create and access your notebook. You can also access that from Google Drive, from your GitHub repo, or upload from a local system. There are multiple ways to do so. Okay, um, one thing that comes to um, comes in handy is look at this. Um, if we click on this RAM disk um, button over here, it shows that how many compute units that we currently have. So as for my version, I have about ninety five compute units. My usage rate is as for now, every hour that I'm executing the notebook, I am consuming 6.86 units of computing power. And it looks like I only have one active session as for, as for now. If we go to manage sessions, um, looks like this is the only one I'm running. If you have different sessions open, you can terminate all the other sessions. Um, mine is not available, but um, when you see like different lines pops up, you can always terminate other ones. Um, and another, uh, some other indicators right here about uh, usage is uh, well, we can look at the system RAM, uh, GPU RAM, and disk. These are all going to go up while you are working on your homeworks. So um, we can see that I only have like 2.7 usage for system RAM, and I have like a lot available at this point. When we're running the homeworks, it's going to go all the way up. So um, these are good indicators for you to monitor as like going through your homeworks. Cool. And we talked about different um, GPU types, for example, like A100 or like T4. How do we change that? So it goes right here, um, change runtime type. We can see that the hardware accelerator, we can have CP, we have CPU A100, L4, T4. Um, these are all the GPUs and uh, CPU versions that we have available. Do not use TPU. It's, it's not like this class is not built to use um, TPU resources. These won't work. Um, all the GPUs are for you to try out. And if you want to change them, like click the different ones, it's going to work. Save it. Cool. Um, here is a, all right, let's go to bash commands. So um, bash commands are the commands that you're gonna see has starts with a exclamation mark. And when we have exclamation mark NVIDIA SMI, when we run it, it's gonna pop up this chart that shows um, with all the system info. For example, my driver version, my CUDA version, um, which GPU I'm using and um, memory usage um, is going to pop up like right here. As for now, I'm not running anything, so it's not showing up. But like this is all the information that's available for for us to check. I mean, and this is the command for it. This is like the exclamation mark 
with all the bash commands that you typically would run in the terminal. Um, this is the same thing, but you gotta put a the mark, um, the exclamation mark in front of that to run that run these commands in Jupyter um, in Colab. So I'm running this cell just to demonstrate that um, how it works. Like we we'll, we'll just need that mark in front of the regular ones that you run that terminal. This is the some, some similar same one as ls. It's going to display um, the current files in your directory. And we can also like do cd, make directory. Those are all the same. Magic commands are the ones that start with a, this percentage symbol. And um, percentage only works on CPU commands, percentage time specifically. For GPU, timing elapsed for the operation it's harder to measure. Manual, like, manual lines, like um, initializing this variable of start and then have it equals to time and time and initialize this end time minus for the last time use end minus start would generally be a rule of thumb to calculate how long it takes the program to operate on GPU. Percentage time only works on CPUs. So that's just a little tip. And running this cell is going to tell us, hey, the wall time difference between those two commands. For the first result, um, this first line, we're seeing that it's taking 5.56 milliseconds. And the second one's longer to operate, which means like, hey, there are slower commands here. Cool. And then runtime. Runtime is a feature that's provided by Colab. So it connects your operations to a virtual machine. Hopefully um, you have been exposed to that in the previous recitations. I would strongly encourage you to go over GCP recitations and look at um, how virtual machine, how to set up a virtual machine. Um, runtime is how, how you like use it. And these are the same things. That's gonna show um, the informations. Um, how do we change a runtime? So there are two ways to do so. The first one comes here. You change your runtime type and you can switch your different accelerator for hardware, or you can click this runtime cell over here where it kept um, the different commands on for your use, for your usage. And training time for ResNet 50. Well, ResNet 50 is um, a network that we're going to encounter um, before the mid middle part of this class. So this is just a neural net structure. And to we are using ResNet 50 as an example to, to demonstrate the um, operational speed between different um, GPUs. So for T4, that's our, if that's our baseline, B100 will be um, like 3.6 times faster comparing to T4. A100 will be 10 times faster. TPU is like completely different. So um, there are paid versions on Colab. Um, choose along, choose your GPU depends on how much time you want your programs to execute. Cool. Restarting session and restarting runtime. There's a major difference between those two. Um, like these are, these are not the same. Restarting session is here, restart session like this command. It's basically closing your browser session, um, which is on the Colab back, back end. It's similar with like when you're closing your Jupyter notebook tab, notebook tab, like it just terminate the current, um, like it disappears on your screen. So um, it will clear all the current variables locally that you're running, but restarting runtime, will disconnect this virtual machine in the backend. It will free up resources and terminate all variables, file, and memory. So you basically lose contact to that virtual machine. Um, how to do that? You go to restart, disconnect, and delete runtime, this one. Um, it will clear the session. You will lose your files in your content folder. And um, switching your GPUs will also delete the current runtime, which means 
um, this instance that you're running on your um, node on your collab, it's it's just gonna disappear. So resetting runtime is helpful when you're trying to um, like doing the project all over, like you're trying to redo it and you wanna start from the beginning. Clearing um, the runtime is gonna be helpful, but closing your browser session, that's like restart session. These two are two different commands. Here are two commands that we use to clear up memory on the backend. So um, after running those, I still have like 82 um, for after running this garbage collector. If we do it again, it's gonna go down and it goes to zero. So we're gonna see those two commands very often as well. And next part, we're gonna talk about some helpful code snippets. Mounting to Google Drive is gonna be very useful as when the runtime ends, we will lose all the files because Colab's local runtime is temporary, the one that we're running as for now. This one is temporary. When the session disconnects or when the virtual machine resets itself, all files in content directory will be lost. Mounting command will give Colab access to your Google Drive. After mounting, you can read and write the files to the path. So here's what I meant. Um, running these command will connect your drive to, will connect your drive with Colab. It gives it access. And my version has already been mounted. Saving and loading files with model checkpoints is also an important part that's gonna be handy. So a checkpoint is a saved snapshot of your code state at a particular point of training. It will let us to resume training or reload the model for inference, even after the collapse session ends um, or disconnects. Checkpoints will typically save the model's parameters, um, the optimizer and scheduler you're using, the loss metrics, and how many epochs you're currently running. So here's a demonstration. As we are initializing a class, so creating a class, and we define this model to be MLP class and pass on all the parameters, defining optimizer, scheduler, loss, epoch, and other matrices. So we're only running five epochs. The metrics that we're using to evaluate is accuracy. Optimizer, we're using Adam here, and scheduler, we're using step LR. These are all the common ones that's, that's, that's very popular. After that, we can define this function to save the model, load the model, and pass along those commands here. We're saving the model, pass along the model, all the other um, variables that we defined, and let's see if the model is saved. So we can see that um, the cell is printing, this model is saved to a directory that we can load later. I'm gonna show you how to. Calling the function of loading the model, and then verify if the model has been loaded. So um, please take a look at this notebook um, as we're providing um, this code as well. So please look at the notebook if you wanna know um, how exactly are these functions defined. Um, and we're sharing the functionality as we, all, uh, as we go through this video along the way. So the model is loaded. We, were, we are resuming at epoch five with matrices of accuracy. How do we manage the data set? There are a couple of ways. Um, there's Kaggle command. We can manually up upload them, download and uploading the data set every time. Moving the data set from Google Drive to the content folder will help you store that in Drive or connect to GCP or AWS um, as we're using cloud. So here are the data sets. Here's an example. first download it says from Kaggle, hit install, make that directory, retrieve username and API key. Here we have, um, like you will have your own username and Kaggle API key. Creating configurations files, download um, from a previous semester's test data and unzip those files. 
after download, like you will see this file showing up on your left and unzip it. As for now, since this comp since this link, um, this is a previous semester's data, it's not going to unzip from my end. But for fall 25, when um, part twos are released, you will be able to unzip the file. I can't do it as for now because this is a previous semester's one. Okay, um, some important tips and considerations is session time. First one is session timeout. Well, collab sessions may time out after a certain period of inactivity. So it it basically, it, it just times you out. To prevent that, remember to save your work frequently. And also, um, Pro Collab Pro would extend session runtimes. So if you're willing to use the paid version, it will extend your, this. it will extend Google's saving time of your work a little longer. Um, it has also has limited persistent storage. When Colab saves your notebook on Drive, the storage space is limited. Make sure to clean up on the server files or download your work to the local machine to free up space. This becomes handy when we come to the later part of the semester when there are when there are a lot of files and different checkpoints and different like models you have to try out, and all of that's going to take up spaces. Um, so this is something to pay attention to and keep in mind of as we go along the way. Free Google Colab accounts also have resource limitations, such as GPU availability, like it's going to take you longer to get connected to GPU. And um, it also controls the maximum session runtimes. That's saying like how many active sessions you can have on your account. For resource extensive projects, consider upgrading to Pro or um, consider upgrading to a Colab Pro for an improved performance. This is not required, but um, as we're offering as a suggestion, that's like a route, a route that you can try out. Pro has, Colab Pro has longer session runtime. It reduced the risk of being timed out, um, gives you priority access to GPU. Uh, you also have more storage um, and also it allows back and back execution if we're using the Pro Plus version. 